Hey folks, what's up? It's Hezer here. Welcome to this tutorial. In this one, we're going to be uh, taking quite a different approach from what we have been doing in this channel. Uh, we are going to just talk about uh, V-Ray for Cinema 4D and uh, Studio Lighting basically inside V-Ray for Cinema 4D, a studio that I've been involved recently with. Uh, they offered me a, v a license for V-Ray and uh, they wanted me to see if uh, it could uh, kind of uh, integrate into their pipeline and uh, you know the fact is V-Ray before version 1.8 uh, was not the very the very best that you could have done uh, with uh, and uh, you know it wasn't that bad but uh, it was so buggy and crappy but uh, from 1.8 uh, is it has been quite a great improvement it has been integrated into cinema 40 much more better and i think now you can rely on as a very good renderer there are there are still some bugs but definitely uh the v-ray 4 c 40 group working on uh the uh plugin really really in a great manner and i think uh, you can uh, right now say that v-ray is part of cinema 40 and uh, uh definitely uh, we we wish that V-Ray uh, in Cinema 4D be something like V-Ray for 3ds Max, in which uh, the plugin is very very integrated into 3ds Max. Uh, V-Ray has a really long story with 3ds Max, and uh, hopefully uh, the day comes that we can say V-Ray for Cinema 4D is uh, the same as V-Ray for 3ds Max. <laughs> anyway, so this tutorial is gonna be a basic sort of uh introduction and sort of preparation for the next and upcoming tutorials on this channel where we're going to be more go more in depth into very for cinema 40 for this lesson we're just going to uh start by basic studio lighting some uh gi preparation and gi setup working with camera uh, a physical camera in viewer and stuff like that so let's get started really quickly i'm just going to create a, a cube and let's uh just uh, go to something like my maybe 500 and 300 in here and maybe 300 there and also let's uh, just uh, go to two segments on each side and let's just hit C go to your axis center make sure uh, you have this guy selected execute this and uh, zero the Y out and now let's just hit NB and I think it's a good time that we get rid of some of these polys. So let's go to these polys and I am going to actually delete these guys here. Make sure you have this selected and also uh, you need to enable tolerance selection and disable only select visible elements. Okay. So let's just uh, delete those parts and there we go. I think this is not gonna be enough for us. So let's go there and actually, first of all, let's optimize it to get rid of those extra points. And let's just uh, select these points up here and I think it's gonna be a bit better. Select all the points, right click or actually select the scale tool and just make something like that I think uh, that's gonna be much more better just that's great okay now let's apply a hypernerve so we get this basic um, studio here and just uh, for the fun of it let's go to the edges and uh, select this edge and this edge uh, and control drag so you have an extra edge down here and you have a better studio situation I'm just going to actually uh, taking I think this tutorial should be quite quick but unfortunately it's gonna take some time so let's just uh, okay I think we can go okay I think we have a good scene right now let's uh, just uh, go there and add uh, some uh, basic geometry so we can stop start our lighting let's me add a simple sphere and uh, again 
looks like to be too big actually because let's go to something like 50 centimeters or even 25 centimeter and 50 segments and um, let's go and see what we're doing that's not too bad let's get back here and start our lighting now um, let's uh, go to our render settings and make sure you have Vray bridge selected as your uh, render setting and that's uh, the only thing that we need to do and let's uh, just go and add some <coughs> light here so let's uh, start by adding an area as uh, area light and uh, let's just put this light uh, where it should be there we go now sorry I'm trying to select these points and change sort of something like this go to the world coordinates and let's start by something like this and see how it works I'm just going to make this light a very light you have to right click and go to the very bridge tags and now you can select the very light and in the V-Ray light, uh, you have some basic parameters here. First of all, make sure you uh, enable the shadows. And this option should be uh, enabled by default and uh, because basically lights have shadows and otherwise uh, they're not going to be lights. And this is great. Let's go to the area light and great. I'm just going to change its uh, color to something quite blue and there we go something like this it's gonna be enough let's go to our V-Ray render uh, settings go to the inert illumination uh, turn GI on uh, and you can see there are a bunch of presets really confusing they really have to make uh, sort of a more uh, better arrangements uh, so many presets so really confusing so I basically go with this classic highest group setups uh, when the time comes for the basic setup and then I tweak parameters as I go and uh, let's start by this medium parameters and let's go to these uh, settings here and see what's going on I think uh, in our lights cache let's go to something like 500 for the moment and Iridian's map. Uh, okay, let's go to our DMC sampler and the aliasing max subdivision. Let's go to something like uh, 16 for the moment so we have a bit quicker render. And now the GI is basically there. And let's just see how this uh, l simple light works in our scene. Let's render and quickly see what's going on there. So this is our first light and uh, uh, very soon we're going to need a, a camera, a very physical camera. Let me just uh, go ahead and create my second light here. Let's just uh, go there and uh, control drag this light to this side and let's just rotate it 180 degrees or more and let's go ahead and change its color to more warm color and I'm going to turn off my first light and see what my uh, second light is doing okay not too bad let's uh, go ahead and uh, create a camera and add a V-Ray physical camera very physical camera let's the first thing I do white balance presets make sure it's neutral so there is no uh, color cast from the camera and the next thing is uh, let's just have a render and see uh, what we need to change okay the first thing I'm gonna actually change is the uh, shutter speed let's go to something like 25 and the uh, film ISO Let's go something like 50 and render 
and we should have a actually sorry we are not looking from the uh, camera right now we're looking and see how we are gonna okay as you can see it's very dark and really we need to tweak stuff a bit more let's go to this film ISO and let's go to I think defaults uh, 100 should be something like 400 or maybe 600 for interior scenes let's see what we get this time we should have a bit more lighter scene but it is not that great yet and let's uh, go to something like 800 and see where we are okay this is a better situation and uh, let me just go to an HD preset and also I'm going to very bridge and add a bit more quality in my max subdivision and also the light cache even though it's time consuming but I want to see the results uh, very quickly so let's go to 1000 uh, off race and let's render it again and hopefully this time we're gonna have a uh, you can see the scene is quite splotchy and uh, I think let's uh, go ahead and get uh, started by uh, actually we uh, let's turn on our first light and see what we're gonna get this time <laughs> Okay, so much more better right now. And I'm just going to select these two lights and make their, uh, let's see, area light, their common tab, the intensity. Let's go to something like uh, 2.5 and see if it's too light or not. But uh, it should be hopefully better than what we have. As you can see, it's good. We have too much splotchy mess there and we have to address that but right now we uh, have we are in a good position uh, I think what we can do is uh, let's uh, add another light in this uh, area I'm just going to change my uh, shading to quick shading lights and uh, just let's get uh, red get out of the camera and add another light I'm just going to actually use one of these lights here our first light and let's rotate it and maybe sort of a bit smaller and put it there sort of an uh, our head but I think something like this would be quite enough I'm going to its settings and make the color neutral and it really depends on what you uh, kind of plan on your final scene if you want to make it more dramatic so you can change the color to whatever you want and let's uh, have a quick render and see what's going on this time so as you can see we're in a much more better situation and generally speaking I like uh, how this uh, kind of uh, works out let me just uh, go ahead and change my color mapping color mapping is one of those very important uh, options that you have to be familiar with and we're gonna go through this stuff uh, hopefully quite soon in this channel so let me make sure I have a rain uh, hard selected and uh, uh, rain hard uh, is right now uh, because the burn value is one so it's basically linear multiply and uh, if it's zero it's uh, gonna be exponential and the value uh, I'm going to just uh, start with something. Uh, if uh, the needs be, we can change the color mapping of our mm, scene. That's much more better, I think. Now, well, the, those splotches uh, really, and let's see what we can do with them. Uh, let's actually create a, a quick uh, light, uh, sort of a reflective material for the sphere. So let's uh, create. Um, very advanced material open the material and let's just uh, go ahead and start creating the material I think the white color is enough and uh, let's enable our first uh, specular uh, layer and see how it's gonna be without a, a lot of changes so let me add this to the uh, sphere and also to, not to the background I think just the sphere would be enough let's just uh, render and see what we are 
uh, and what we can do is this render and okay now I think it's not too bad just those splotches are a bit uh, problematic and let's go ahead and address those by going to DMC sampler uh, anti-aliasing mm. Let's go to um, our origins map settings and let's me go to something like uh, and 70 here, 30 for our interplate samples and for our hemispheric subdivision 70 would be a good starting point. And uh, let's go there and see if it's gonna uh, solve any of our problems uh, with these splotches. Okay, as you can see now we have much more cleaner background and uh, it is a good time but um, I'm going to this uh, two lights and I'm really planning on uh, increasing their in intensity let's go to something like four maybe it's too much but uh, let's see how they really uh, affect the uh, scene Okay, it's not too bad. Now it really depends on your uh, what you want uh, from your scene, and those colors could be easily changed uh, to whatever you want. Let me just go to more extreme and more saturated colors and see uh, if they have any effect on our scene. And let's uh, have another quick render. Generally speaking, you can see the uh, blue tone and uh, yellow tones in our scene. Now, this is generally speaking, it's a good idea and good starting point, uh, I think. Thank you for watching. See you next time.